Hello and a warm welcome to another episode of Living Football. We are back in Switzerland after an exciting Congress week in Doha and we're looking forward to a jam-packed show on the road to the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. But that's not the only FIFA tournament this year. In August, Costa Rica will be hosting the Under-20 Women's World Cup and we will speak to Costa Rica's football icon Paolo Wanchope. Today you will also meet Khanim Al Mufta, a very special person from Qatar and the class of 2022, the first graduating class of the brand new FIFA diploma in club management. Fabio Cannavaro. And we proudly present one of the first graduates of our brand new FIFA diploma in club management, FIFA World Cup winner Fabio Cannavaro. It's great to have you. Thank you for oh, being thank with you us. To you. Fabio, after this 14 month journey. What is it like now to have the diploma and also as we see the medal around your neck? <laughs> I'm so proud. Uh, after 14 months, uh, to be honest with you, I'm so, so happy because uh, this experience makes me not only better coach, but uh, also better man for uh, uh, improving maybe in the future the, my, next, uh, my next club because uh, I had the opportunity to, to speak and to listen with uh, many people around the world and this is for me was a, was a great. But you, as you said, it wasn't easy. You were in China. You, you sometimes had to get up in the middle exactly. of the night to participate in the, in the online program. Yeah, because this course uh, came uh, during the pandemic. So every, everything was uh, with the video call and at the different time the was uh, seven hours, eight hours. But uh, in the end, uh, the sacrifice I did, uh, uh, they are very, very good because I, what I said before, the experience in this uh, diploma in club management is, uh, is great. And as you say, it's called diploma in club management. We all know that you work as a coach. Yeah. So are you focusing um, maybe in the future more than on a management career? Will we see you on an executive level uh, more than on the coaching side? Uh, no, no, because no, because now I'm happy as a coach. But also I think uh, sometimes um, some coach need to understand uh, the, the club issues, you need to work with the, with the club management for improve uh, many things, not only the, the, the players on the, on the field, but also the, the team outside of the field. This also is really important for me and this course of course make me uh, the view about the football completely different. I mean, it was an excellent course the last week, for example, it was jam-packed with lots of extraordinary speakers. We have a professor from Columbia University for Finance and Economics, Stephen Mendes. He's the supervisor. So p these people are really, they are experts on their field. From which knowledge did you benefit most? Ma, what you said uh, about uh, the management of the club, about uh, how they make profit, how they uh, the revenue, how, how they try to do the best for uh, improve the, the club. Uh, this kind of things for the, the coach always, you know, is a part uh, they don't want to come in. But uh, I had these experiences for me it was uh, uh, great to listen to speakers like Steven because he spent with us uh, every day was with us and also the opportunity to be here all together and the connection between us was amazing. It, it's a great group, you know. Yeah. I know you have this WhatsApp group and the first time <laughs> it was very quiet and then all the pictures yeah, came rushing exactly. in and then, then the group involved. So it's really now the first graduating class. It's the class of 2022. It's the first FIFA diploma class ever in club management. So nobody this. can take this, this exactly. away from you. No, you know? no, we are lucky for this. Uh, we are honored to be part, to be part of the first uh, FIFA club management. And it's, it's a great, and I, in the end, everyone was happy. Everyone had the amazing experience. And uh, unfortunately, tomorrow we leave. So we don't know maybe when we can meet again. But 
uh, we spend a very nice time. Thank you for the FIFA, thank you for uh, all of you. Uh, we are so happy for this. Mille grazie, Fabio Ciao. Calavaro. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And before, we are introducing one of the masterminds of the FIFA Diploma in Club Management. Let's take a look at some highlights of this graduating week. It's my great, great pleasure to congratulate you all for uh, this achievement. And here is one of the masterminds of this diploma, FIFA's Head of Professional Football, Ornella Desire Belia. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much, Jessica. Pleasure to be here. Ornella, I would like to go back a couple of months. In March 2021, FIFA launched this innovative program. So how would you describe the journey so far? The journey has been just amazing. We had the opportunity to meet with people from all around the world, club executives, from all around the world, just being able to do some knowledge sharing, networking, so it's been something with, with, uh, which has enriched us a lot, and I feel really grateful for this opportunity. Anela, you worked in several football clubs, leading law firms and sport institutions in five different countries, so from your vast experience, why is this FIFA diploma in club management so important? Well, look, I was born professionally in a football club, a small football club in the south of Italy, Calcio Catania. And now that I am FIFA, of course, based on that background I have, I realized how important it is for FIFA to help those clubs, those smaller clubs from less developed regions that need, you know, a boost to uh, be able to get professionalized and uh, uh, be able to compete at the highest level. So it's very important because it's a way, it's one of our tools at FIFA to make the president's vision uh, of making football truly global happen. So I believe it's uh, one of the uh, most important tools uh, for, for FIFA to, to make the vision. It's sharing so. knowledge, it's bringing people together from all over the world. I think you created also kind of a, a relationships that would never happen before. So I think from a personal point of view that this is a win-win situation, not only for the club executives, to get to know each other and to meet very important speakers, but also to be closer with FIFA. Exactly, and uh, the ambition was to get closer to the clubs, to get closer to the reality, to their needs, to their concerns, to mm, open the doors of FIFA to the reality, to football, to, to the pitch. So, yeah. <laughs> And if we are looking now, it was a great success, this first FIFA diploma in club management. So, well, after the game is, as we all know, before the game. So what are we looking forward to in the second edition? We are already in the process of uh, announcing the upcoming edition, just in a few weeks. Uh, the new edition, the second edition, will start in September. will last for one year and a half. Uh, there will be several um, presential sessions in four or five different countries, uh, sorry, four or five different continents. <laughs> so it's going to be really amazing for those participants who will be able, of course, to take advantage of uh, uh, understanding how different cultures and uh, different clubs work uh, in uh, different regions. And we really look forward. We have also some uh, players joining, not just, just uh, uh, 
club executives. By the way, the application process for the club executive will be open again, as I said, in, uh, in June. So we look forward to it. Annella, mille grazie. grazie. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure also to accompany you in this week. So, and we are congratulating all the graduates of the first FIFA diploma in club management. Thank you, Thank you Ornella, one of the leading women in FIFA. And uh, speaking about women, we are looking forward to the next big FIFA women's event, the Under 20 Women's World Cup in Costa Rica. And the draw just took place at the National Theatre in San Jose and marked one of the final milestones on the road to the tournament. Famos juntas. Muy buenas tardes, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the draw for the FIFA Under 20 Women's World Cup Costa Rica 2022. Costa Rica. No podía ser de otra manera, couldn't be different, Costa Rica. Brazil. Ooh. Brazil. Group A, Costa Rica, Australia, Spain and Brazil. In Group B, we have Germany, Colombia, New Zealand, and Mexico. In Group C, France, Nigeria, Canada, and Korea Republic. And finally, Group D, Japan, Netherlands, Ghana, and the USA. Thank you so, so much. And remember, vamos juntas. So in August, the eyes of world football will be on Costa Rica and our draw assistant will also be watching closely. An icon of Costa Rican football, Costa Rica's top goal scorer in the FIFA World Cup and former head coach of the men's national team, Paolo Juanchope. Paolo, it's great to have you with us. What does holding a major FIFA World Cup event mean to the people of Costa Rica and to Costa Rican football? Well, it, it means a lot. I mean, it means uh, more girls and young people uh, will aspire to play uh, football. And, and also it's a great uh, platform for, you know, to develop and engage and uh, educate young people. So, um, it's, you know, I mean, as I said it before, football is, is, is a great, it's a great tool, you know, for, for the society. And, and, and yeah, and Costa Rica has the, have that, opportunity to to help the, the the world cup what do you hope this tournament does in terms of bringing costa rican football forward and what do you think costa rican football might look like in the future well i think um i would think um that will accelerate the growth and and the development of of, of women's game um not only in costa rica but in the wider region and it will give Costa Rica a magnificent opportunity to to leave a legacy, you know, in terms of, of infrastructure, infrastructure um, support of women's football and, and, and human talent. You know, uh, we had uh, the chance to help the, the, the World Cup, the under 17s in 2014. And we can see the, the, the you know, the growth and the development of, of football by now so uh, imagine to have another world cup so it would be it would be great for for costa rica and that's what holding a tournament is all about isn't it sharing that experience with everybody in the football family in your career paul how much have you seen women's football in costa rica develop and also worldwide well i think uh, well the biggest changes that i'm seeing is that there are more engagement of, of young girls playing uh, across, you know, everywhere. Um, you can see them now playing in, in, you know, in in the schools, in the parks, in the local academies, and that, of course, will make uh, women's uh, football uh, stronger. Um, uh, now, the last 10, 15 years, uh, we can see, you know women's plays playing everywhere so that's, that's that's something that that is is happening not only in costa rica but in the world and i think um 
that's that's the key thing, you know, uh, the engagement of the young girls, and that will make uh, you know women's uh, football stronger. As for the girls in the under twenty team for Costa Rica, what can be expected from them on home soil? I think they they are well prepared. Um, one of the positive aspects uh, that these girls have is that the majority of the um, of them compete in, in the first division clubs, so that will give them more um, confidence for the for the tournament. So we hope to surprise the world and and taking into account that there are countries uh, that are much more uh, much more developed women's football, but um, I think. Um, uh, we can give a you know a nice surprise and, you know the fact that we are playing at home that with our you know fans and everything I think they uh, they will do they will do uh, good and hopefully we can uh, surprise the world like uh, we did in in the World Cup of Brazil you know the men's uh, World Cup in Brazil 2014. Oh, yes, you did. The team around Kayla Navas made it to the quarterfinals at the FIFA World Cup in Brazil, and they were at the edge of beating the Netherlands. Now there's a huge match coming up, the intercontinental playoff for the FIFA World Cup against New Zealand. How big is this game for Costa Rican football, Paolo? Um, we are very passionate in our country about football, so it means a lot. Um, uh, you know, I, I can assure you that... that that day, every uh, everything will will stop. You know, we will we all will watch that game, and and I think we will win. You know, that game. Uh, we have a good players, uh, great experience. Uh, the likes like um, the likes of uh, Navas, of Celso, Brian Ruiz, Joel Campbell, plus uh, good young players, you know, coming in like um, Alonso Martinez, Gerson Torres, Jewison Bennett. So we have everything. We have everything um, uh, to win that game. Uh, I know New Zealand is, is a good team as well with, with good players, players playing in, in England, in Denmark, in the MLS. But um, the edge of, of the experience... Uh, is, is so important in, 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 in only one game. So we'll expect uh, Costa Rica to, to win and, and to go through. Thank you very much, Paolo. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for taking the time. See you soon. All the best. Thank you, Paolo. And more information on the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup is available on FIFA.com. On our journey to football's flagship event at the end of the year, the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022, we would also like to introduce you to some remarkable people in living football who touched us with their impressive stories. And one of them is Hanim Al Mufta, and we had the chance to meet him in Doha. My name is Ghanem Al Mufta. I was born on May 5, 2002. I was diagnosed with a rare condition known as casual regression syndrome, which impairs the development of the lower spine. My parents named me Ghanem, which stands for the winner of the battle. And I hope to show the world that no dream is too big and no disability can withhold us from our dreams. I, I grew up uh, in Qatar. I had a beautiful childhood. I have countless fun memories with my twin brother and sister growing up uh, together. Throughout our youth, our parents motivated us to engage uh, into sports. Sports have been always a crucial part of my life and an important factor for my personal development. I swim, scuba dive, play football, ice skating, horse riding. Sports have helped me much more than in a physical aspect alone. Growing up with my disability at times caused a frustration and it took self-awareness to move past the opinion of others. In my life, just like any one of us, I have experienced my shares of challenges and setbacks both on professional and personal level. I look at these challenges as a way to honor my strength and as a reminder to always be thankful and appreciative of the better days. It is because of my parents that I embody this positive life philosophy. My mother and father are the wind beneath my wings. 
they dedicated their lives to make me the person I am today. While it might be hard to believe, I do not see limitations in any sphere of life because of what they taught me. It is a great honor to be the first disabled FIFA World Cup uh, ambassador. It makes me extremely proud to represent my country and my community as a FIFA World Cup ambassador. I could never have imagined reaching a milestone such as this one. Within my capacities as a FIFA World Cup ambassador, I want to send a message of hope, inclusivity, peace, and unity for humanity. I hope to inspire people and show the world that life with disability can be fulfilling. Today, many of the world's 1 billion disabled women and men still struggle to overcome barriers blocking their human rights and inclusion in societies. Despite existing legal frameworks in the international, national, and local level, millions of disabled remain marginalized, lacking access to work, fair treatment, basic services such as health and education. For me, it is critical to encourage people to look beyond disability and remind them that we can all find similarities in one another the same way we can find differences. The raise in awareness enables the development of an empathetic and understanding culture which in turn it creates an environment that welcomes and accommodates any individual. I am confident that this representation and FIFA World Cup efforts will not go unseen. It will influence communities all around the world. My message to fans with disabilities considering coming to Qatar is that they can rest assured of a pleasant experience. To complement the accessible infrastructure, I have been informed that there will be adequate services on match day for disabled uh, people such as uh, dedicated volunteers, uh, shuttles, wheelchair escort services, live audio descriptive commentary for uh, blind people and partially sighted uh, fans, uh, assistive hearing device for deaf and hard of hearing people, amongst other efforts to strengthen accessibility. The FIFA World Cup is one of the few events that manages really to bring the entire world together athletes and spectators come to the FIFA World Cup respect the same rules as equal without any discrimination. I hope this tournament and my ambassadorship will remind people that the only thing that separates people with disability from anyone is opportunity. I'm a proud Qatari. It makes me extremely happy that we will have this opportunity to host the first FIFA tournament in the Arab region this year. Also, it is a great honor to be the FIFA World Cup ambassador and represent my home country, uh, Qatar. I will use this opportunity to show the world our beloved country and the overarching norm of dialogue, respect, and cultural diversity. We can't wait to welcome the world. And as you know, we always try to showcase some of the myriad projects that FIFA and the FIFA Foundation are developing, supporting and funding all over the world. And this time we are in Mongolia together with FIFA World Cup winner and FIFA Foundation CEO Yuri Jorkaev. A very special trip, um, including some family business. It's good to, uh, during the exercise, you know, you stop. Uh, you make a circle and you can deliver some uh, tools or life skills from discrimination, gender equality, uh, community. Now, every, every moment is always good when you're using sport for good. And uh, Football for School is, uh, is, is very popular, not only on the small country. I mean, Mongolia is a big country, small population. Uh, we just sign with friends. Uh, with India, uh, we launch in Qatar, in Chile. You know, it's a, it's an it's a global project. Uh, 그렇습니다. 저는 어, 바로 이런 축구 교실을 한국에서 어, 32년 전에 시작을 했는데 제가 독일을 경험하고 돌아와서 이 축구 교실을 운영을 해야 되겠다라고 생각을 한 것은 아, 축구를 전문적으로 한 키운다는 것보다는 전반적으로 
아이들에게 축구를 통해서 사회성을 키워주는 이 역할이 굉장히 중요하다. 선수가 되는 것도 중요하지만 축구를 통해서 나를 알고 동료를 알고 상대를 아는 이런 그 어렸을 때부터 이런 것이 생활화된다면 이런 것이 문화가 된다면 어, 그 국가의 그 미래를 위해서도 상당히 중요하다고 저는 판단을 했습니다. 아, 그거는 아, 축구는 혼자 할수 없기 때문에 이 사회라는 공동체 안에서 아, 우리가 함께 살아가기 위해서는 이 축구가 아, 그런 공동체의 기초를 세우는 일에 저는 아주 대단히 큰 역할을 한다고 생각하고 그것이 더 건강한 사회를 만들어낼 수 있다고 라 생각해서 바로 이렇게 하는 이 취지가 그런 의미에서 중요하다고 저는 강조를 하는 것입니다. Yeah, I have a lot of very positive memories. Myself playing as a kid, I played in a lot of tournaments like them as well, in the park, in the school, and basically everywhere where there was a ball, we played football. And I think that's a nice thing of football that you can, everyone can play it. It's a game for everyone, and it doesn't matter what age, where you're from, what language you speak. I don't speak Mongolian, and we got on very well. Um, we bonded very quick as well, and that's a nice thing with football. So I have a lot of positive memories. Just. Yeah, bonding with new people, playing in a team environment, and also learning a lot from football. Ben, écoutez, moi, je pense que, de, bien sûr, que je suis très heureux de, de pour Yuri parce qu'il a, il a, il a, bien sûr, percé. Il a, ça a été un très grand joueur, mais il s'est pas mené tout seul. Vous savez, heureusement, donc parce que je crois que le fait que j'ai été avant lui, c'est mieux. Ça lui a permis donc de, de voir un peu, de travailler un peu plus peut-être. Donc, je l'ai aidé dans, 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 dans le football. J'ai essayé donc. Euh, quand on allait, quand j'allais courir, il, cour, il venait courir avec moi, vous voyez, donc tout ça fait, fait qu'à un moment ou à un autre, il a été très bon sur le port de l'eau et, et il a percé, donc, et c'est important, c'est important que, euh, moi je pense que, bon, les enfants de, de, donc, puissent donc euh, avoir des facilités pour, bon, pour travailler, c'est important, c'est important, et je crois, moi je suis très, très heureux, hein, même si j'ai deux, 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 trois, deux, trois fils, donc c'est mes donc un, Mais les trois sont très, très, très gentils, ils, jouent, ils ont joué au football et je suis très heureux. Voilà. Ah, 저야 뭐, 어, 아버지가 제 영웅이었고, 제 꿈이었고, 항상 축구선수 밖에 생각을 안 하게 해준 그런 장본이었기 때문에 아버지는 제 삶에 있어서 축구선수 생활에 있어서 굉장히 제일 큰 영향을 준 저의 가장 중요한 사람이었어요. As the captain of the national team, you know, I grew up watching games and uh, sharing for friends. And uh, this, is, this was very important for me because I remember the, the proud of my father uh, working, uh, practicing, trying to, to do his best for his country. And I realized how important when, when you have character, humility, uh, effort and uh, joy to play this game. It's important that you improve every day. It's not just a gift that my father gave me. Or, uh, I was born with this gift. I, I worked so hard for today to uh, share with all the kids and, uh, and my team and the uh, member of the Mongolian delegation. You know, it's important that uh, when you had, uh, I have the chance to have my father who teach me, who show me, and now it's us to show the kids to uh, enjoy the game. At the end, it's just a game. Another fabulous story written by the FIFA Foundation with two father and son duos. So that's it for today. Next time we will look even beyond the 2022 FIFA World Cup and introduce you to some of the beautiful cities that will host the 2026 FIFA World Cup. Till then, have a great time. Take care, stay healthy and bye-bye.